Stay tuned for that. Welcome to the Flummery, number 23. 23 on Flum! I am joined with my co-host... Skinny Penis. My boy, Skinny Penis, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> Frosty. It's your boy. <laughs> it's your boy, Skinny, Skinny Penis. penis. <laughs> I am here as well, War Machine, a.k.a. Flavor Inc. We're also uh, joined with Shauna today. It's a Shauna kind of day. Shauna what? Shauna. 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 Oh, yeah. She's from Vegas, isn't she? She's probably from there. Yeah. It looks like she's from Vegas. Probably more like New Mexico. <laughs> she's probably from a farm on in Kansas. <laughs> she gets <laughs> sick of being a ogled and then decided to be a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it works. How was your weekend, Adam? It was f- jam-packed full of stuff. Yeah, what'd you do? I drove to South Dakota, my new trucks. Oh, yeah, did you, is it here? It is. Mm, I get to see it afterwards. You get to, we'll find out. Will you be bar- partaking in a beverage after the flummery? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I will. Okay. Saji's wondering if we're coming up Jason tonight. Massage. Yeah. I call him today, actually. I sent him a Facebook uh, messenger yesterday because I was watching... Um, Anthony Bourdain, Private Parts Unknown, Private Parts Unknown, and they were in Japan. So it made me think of Jason. Oh, yeah. What yeah. Did, so what, did he eat squid or something? He, uh, I mean, I couldn't listen. You know, have you ever seen those videos? He's a million things. Have you ever seen those videos where they have like the octopus and it's like just cut up? There was prawns. And they pour like soy sauce or yep, something and on it. it and moves, it moves. And then they eat it that way. Yuck. Look. Think about eating a bucket full of worms. That's what that would be like. It's the same probably texture. I bet. Do you like like uh, maybe a little more calamari? I do like calamari. It's the same but thing. I wouldn't want it moving. I don't understand why people eat that. That moving thing? Well, just that cephalopod kind of thing. It makes them feel like they're... there's no actually there's not a lot of nutritional value to that actually. There isn't. Mm, maybe some minerals and stuff, but. It makes them feel like they're... I don't think there's a lot of protein in, in that. Dominating or something. I don't think there's a lot of protein in that. I I'm not a, I'm not an expert on that, but I don't... I don't protein's in muscle, right? I don't... Yeah, I don't... Well, and it's just different. Human it's muscle not, I mean, has lots of protein. That's why I eat people. <laughs> Did you get that cookbook? 101 Ways to Cook a Human Being? Yeah, well, the cookbook is... They had an old cooking show back. It was a black and white cooking show. And they made a cookbook for humans. Mm. How to cook human. I, I wonder if they was. brought that on that airplane trip where those Chilean soccer players crashed into in the, the mountain. Andes. Yeah. Do you remember that movie Alive? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually rewatched that last year. Why? <laughs> it's. They showed them like cutting into the butt, right? They show them like going like they're going to cut in the butt, but that, like they don't, sh- you know, it's. it. Okay, I'm glad. They do. This they be do, because, but necessary. part of them are like covered in snow, so it's not really discernible, you know? Yeah, I got you. So. Yeah, that was their way of getting around using a full human being <laughs> for the scene. And they did it the right way. They went into the like leg and butt area. Yeah, that was a good good scene. Good movie, I mean. That scene I didn't like, but it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. I guess you have to do what you got to do. I don't Is that make even... make that choice. I mean, that's a true story. No. Yep. And it was... They were embarrassed by that. They didn't want to tell anybody that they had well, to do that. Fuck no. I wouldn't want to either. I don't know if I'd do it. If you're starving, you probably would. How would you do it, though? What do you mean? Well, how long after they did that did they get out of it there? It was days, if not a week or so. Yeah, but like, okay, so they... How long did they wait? They had to wait. I bet it was longer than a week. Because it would take me more than a week. To how long were they up there? I don't remember. Me neither. Um, 
But it would take me more than a week before I got the taste of human like on my mind. We can make this, you know, since we don't really have a, a direction, I have a few ideas that we can take this podcast today. Okay, I'm ready. But we'll talk about this first. I can't. I don't even know how to look that up. Maybe UFO, paranormal kind of stuff, too. Oh, I was just reading. Oh, I, I was actually listening to something. To have something for you. Uh, Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. Have you ever heard of that? Skinwalker? Yeah. No. We'll talk about that after we're done talking about I've, this. I've got a bunch of... Uh, I actually have a story from my trip that we can talk about, too. All right. So well, it, it, since it. I asked you about your weekend, why don't you do that, and then we'll get back to that. So we went to South Dakota. To see your parents. And Yep. See my folks for the first time in a long time. What do you mean? You were just there. Um, no, no. I think they were here. You went down and got your kids not too long ago. Oh, yeah. We meet halfway for those, though. Mm. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> you got to drive the same. Well, I mean, it would be, it's half as much driving, but it's, you got to do it all in one day. And it's like, oh my God, that sucks. <laughs> right. And it's Saji. the worst roads ever. But so we, we, so we went down there, had a really good time. Um, first night we went, my aunt was having a surprise get together or her kids did for her birthday. And they had, well, they had already had another surprise on the weekend Friday before. Night? Yeah. And so we went down there. I had a couple drinks with my cousin, one of my favorite people, uh, my cousin Matt. And then he invited us to dinner for the next day. Well, the next day I took Selena uh, to the driving range because I have some clubs, clubs for her now. And I taught her how to hit the garf ball. Yeah. Taught her how to hit the garf Girl ball. Girf ball. Girlf. Mm-hmm. Girlf. I haven't been golfing yet, and I was thinking about doing it today, but I slept in and cleaned and ran errands today. She wouldn't let me go like out on the course and teach her, so we just had to do it on the driving range. And then the next day, Sunday, I went golfing. What golf course was that when I saw the picture on Facebook? Brandon. Brandon Golf Course, which was actually a really nice course. Yeah? Yeah. I was on pace to shoot a 43. Oh, so you only played with, nine. Yep, with uh, uh, with three holes left. And guess what I shot? What? Just add seven. I shot a fifty. Right. So you're on. You're on. Fuck. You're on mark for a hundred. Yeah, but it's like. I mean, that's the way golf I is, man. Two. I had three holes to go, and I could have had like the best score of my life. Yeah. I was thinking about hitting hidden greens up today, but that didn't happen. Why not? Like I said, I slept in and I did laundry and cleaned. Uh, I worked on the vehicles all day today. Yeah? yeah. Oh, is that why your hands look like a like I was, dirty butthole? Well, it looks like I've been, uh, <laughs> yeah, like I've been clawing at a stripper's uh, g-string all day. Mm. They, yeah, they've 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 still got the stuff under the fingernails. Yeah, I remember those days. I didn't want to use miss the, them. I didn't want to use a little brush thing. We you used know? to use solvent. My dad had a big thing of solvent. We used like acetone, like part cleaner. Yeah. Okay. And then I, or we used orange goo. Yeah. I know, got orange. That's what I did for my hands, but my which fingernails. Just the, which just got the like the the granules, the granules in it and stuff. The granules. Mm-hmm. But Merry Christmas, the th- Grandma. The thing is, you can't use solvent and then use orange. You have to use orange and then use solvent. Why will it like burn you? No, it just doesn't. The orange doesn't. The solvent like s- sinks in your oil in your hands, and yeah. it doesn't like clean it. Huh. They will both clean it, but they just don't. They're they're not effective together. Okay, let's get this straight. Orange first. Orange first, and then solvent. And then solvent. I, I used to wash. Solvent's parts. probably not the best thing for your body, but I don't know. I don't know. People, I, my dad and I. Have, did it for years so my dad did it for years and i fall in his you know yeah we used, to have a, we used to have a big solvent cleaner like a big metal parts yeah, like cleaner a safety clean with a with a spray nozzle yeah like a safety clean mm-hmm. yep and then you'd have to clean the bottom of it and the bottom would just be like gunk like Ugh. oil gunk you know yeah because solvent's you know clear but after you're washing parts with it it's just black well, and like, then it goes back down into the mm-hmm. into the solution right yep into the solvent bin Yep. For solvency. Very particular smell to that, too. Yeah, I used to wash parts when I worked on nail guns. Mm-hmm. We used to wash parts in that, which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're, you know, fixing an engine piece or a part or something, that's 
It's nice to have. Mm-hmm. So otherwise, you get like a, a, you know, like a little tray, and then you're gonna spray it with some shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, it's better if you can reuse this stuff. Yeah, it's more like if you're taking bolts out, sustainable. You know, things yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, especially on old cars. Yeah. Do you have to clean? So you're cleaning like, like well, it doesn't really clean rust off, right? It's pretty much just like old grease and dirt mm. and grime. Yeah, it's it's not a rust cleaner per se. I mean, I'm sure it'll take some rust off, but you want to usually wear a brush or do whatever you can besides that to take that off. You know, you know, um, you can wire brush it in the solvent and it'll take it off. Yeah, I suppose. I did the brakes in my wife's car, the oil change. I fixed the windshield weather strip with glue. And then, <laughs> that's how I say it. Glue. Glue. And then. Well, uh, you're Mr. Mechanic Productive today, aren't you? Yeah. And I changed the oil in the Explorer. The Explorer. And I put in a new. Are you getting it ready to. Are you going to sell it? Yeah. Yeah. I put a stabilizer, like a, the link in the front end mm-hmm. from the. Um, it's going to stabilize your link kit is what I call it, but it's it's just a bar that goes from the sway bar, stabilizer sway bar, down to the A-arm. So anyway, I did all that I know today. exactly what you're talking about. Yep, and it totally sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's not I, fun. It was fun for half of half the time I was having fun. The other half I was like, God damn it. One man. of the worst experiences I've had working on a vehicle was my old Toyota 4Runner. And there was a I fuel pump on, on the side of the engine block. What? Why was it or there? Or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's four bolts, and it was the hardest thing to get, and it probably took about three hours to get four bolts and on, in and out. Oh. Why? Where, where you have to just, like, you have to find the exact right tool, yeah, right and angle. And then you only get to turn it like it. And you're, like, your hand's in a place where it's, like. And it hurts you? Yeah, and you're, like. It's yeah. I'll never forget that. I was my dad was. I was. I mainly worked on it. I mean, you're busting a sweat just sitting there, and then you get super frustrated. You want to kill somebody. Hmm. Yeah. I. I like I said. Half the time I'm fucking yelling at the vehicle like God damn it! Just fucking break loose or Mm -hmm. I like the sway bar. I had to get it or the link kit. I had to get it like jammed in there just right because it's a certain length and yeah it's totally totally stuck it totally sucked so was that your first time golfing this year yep 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 your daughter did nine with you no 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 nobody did you see your dr pepper bottle oh some schnoosh Mm -hmm. (laughs) no my kids were at my focus's place and i just I showed my wife how to hit a ball. Oh, did she go with you? Yeah. Well, she went to the driving range, and then I just walked the nine myself the next day. You did walk? Yeah. I was like, "Uh, honey, well, I've got this two hours here to go. (laughs) I'm like, okay, thanks. Was that an 18-hole golf course? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's a full-on, it's a municipal golf course, but it's really nice. It's probably one of the better ones in that town, I'm sure. Just it was it was perfect. The trees were all like perfectly kept. The fairways weren't super wide, but they weren't you know link style. And there were hazards, but they weren't like there were like probably two hazards on every hole, you know. Mm-hmm. And the water wasn't ridiculous, you know, and the sand wasn't ridiculous. It was just right. Because actually, I would totally do that. I plan on probably doing that every time I go there. If I can. So you're on, you're on route to shoot a 43. Yeah, and then I didn't. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Is that, uh, <laughs> was that from Family Guy? I don't know, probably. Do it again. You suck. Yeah, that sounds like it. Stewie. So anyways, my weekend, I worked all weekend. Yeah? Yeah. How was that? Oh. Let's see, Saturday? It, it was slow most of the night, and then I knew, really, yep, and then I knew it was going to happen. And same thing Sunday too. One a.m. Yeah, ten thirty, eleven, twelve o'clock. Everybody just piles in. Where are they coming from? Uh, wherever that they don't have a cabin or a backyard to relax in. Right. So maybe they were at somebody's place. Yeah. 
And then they're like normal people. We're like, well, oh, that's about it for the night. We're going to wrap it up. Yep. Saturday and, and Sunday were both like that. Any uh, fights? No. Damn. We had one dude. This, um, these two guys are coming, a black guy and a white guy. They're like um, sidekicks. They're, they have like three brain cells and they're all fighting each other. They're compadres. Um, yeah. And. <laughs> How do I tell this story? Um, so they, they, they've been coming in almost every day. and Wait a second. How many people is this? Just two, right? Two of them. And they're just like really tight. And they're really nice guys. They are really nice guys. Yeah. They're not very intelligent at all, though. <laughs> I don't. I mean, you don't and they mean their well. names, but do I know them? No. They mean well. You've probably seen one. The, the, the little black guy, he's got the dreads. He looks like he's got them in little ponytails. No, I don't know. No. Him. He, he, okay, he's short guy. Yeah, very, he's really short. Oh, um, really nice. Both really nice, but they don't. Um, they don't know how to handle things. <laughs> and sometimes they'll go out in the parking lot and smoke weed, come back in, and then it's just cross-eyed by the time they get back in. Smoke weed just every day. Cross-eyed. So pie-eyed. This the the white guy gets he come, shows up. They're sitting out on the patio, right? Yeah. And I don't know what this guy's on, but they're both out there. The, the black guy is drinking. The white guy is just like sitting there on a chair with this just dumb look on his face. Like he's just zoned out and gone, right? He ends up pissing his pants Uh-oh. and sitting there, Saturday. just sitting there on the patio. It's Saturday. Uh, Friday, Thursday or Friday night. Oh, okay. And then they came back. <laughs> Listen to this. So ah. <laughs> we get him up. Jordan and and uh, and Nick get plaster or like uh, hey, glo- uh, get the excuse get the gloves me, on, sir. get the gloves on. Oh yeah, because they got to escort them out. You know, excuse me, sir. It seems like you might have pissed your pants. Totally. I mean, he was. Was there something wrong with golf. the service today? But you know what's cool about the chairs is they're graded, so it just goes. Oh. Right Please it. tell me you sprayed those. Off. Oh, we took a bucket of bleach water and dumped oh, it in there. That's good. That's good. Bleach. So um, they kind of escort, escort them out. He's barely walking. You know, where did they take him? Like straight to the police? We're like, well, the black kid was with him. I forget his name. And he's like, you need to get your buddy home. And he's like, yeah, can I come back and drink? And I'm like, "Uh, probably not tonight. I think you're good. You've had enough. (laughs) You know, he's like, I'm just going to bring him out to the car and hold his keys. So, you know, what did he do? He brings him out to his car, lays him in the back seat, right? Okay. Wow. And then we don't let him back in. So what happens is he goes back out to his buddy's car where his buddy's laying reverses it up, make, they make out reverses it speeding going up the hill towards mendota road goes up onto the lawn okay so oh, you know, folks like, this is you know how you know how it's all like a hill up to the to the, the road. driveway so he's in the driveway well he's on the grass by this point because <laughs> he backs out of the spot that's you know where the road comes down yeah and he backs out but he goes up onto the grass okay and then he speeds around and goes around the building in reverse. In, re- in reverse, but he no. He, then he goes forward and he goes. They speed around the back of the building. Oh my god! Like crazy fast. So we're like, what the uh, fuck! And he's loaded. That's how you get. He's loaded. Arrested. Yeah. So they're done, like indefinitely. Oh yeah, they're done. And that's not. You don't want that happening. No. You kill somebody. In we the did. Line. We did everything. That we could do, you know, to prevent yeah. what we needed to, you know, on our side, on our side of the deal as a bar, we yeah. did what we did, what we could do, you know? Yeah. He's like, I got his keys. We're like, okay, well, you're not driving. He's like, no. We're like, fine. And then all of a sudden he gets in the, the truck and whoop, oh. gone. Oh, I see Jordan. I didn't see him take off, but I see Jordan and Nick running through, running into the building, going to the back to see them driving around the back. So they go through the, our, you know. Our bar to, to see where they're at. Oh my god, dude! Imagine if he would have went down and over that. Uh, is behind the bar there? Oh, it's a is five it, foot drop off at least for four or five foot drop off. A retaining wall. Yeah, the retaining wall. Yeah, there's a little hill. And How then do you say yeah, uh, retaining wall? Yeah, so if they went over that, they would have been effed. Well, I kind of wish they had gone over it. It was it was crazy. I don't know. <laughs> so you know, I wish them the best, and I hope their three brain cells survive and. <laughs> They'd well, be if he goes over the retaining wall, though, then, then they don't get to drive anymore, which would have nope. been good. 
Holy shit. And, yeah, probably per se, and nobody ho- hopefully would have got hurt. Yeah, that would be bad. Mm-hmm. So that was a little bit of my weekend. <laughs> Dealing with the fucking shenanigans. Yep. Gotta did, love bartending. Did you see what I brought up? Shut up. Have you heard? Have you heard? I have not heard of this. It's been confirmed. <laughs> Is Tom, uh, is Tom Cruise involved in this? Tom Cruise has confirmed that there will be a Top Gun. Does he play Tom's scar- character this time? <laughs> well, I think he plays Slider, and he stinks. <laughs> <laughs> what was Tom Scarrett's character's name? Uh, Viper. Viper. Yep. No, no, Viper, Viper was, was a second-hand guy. And I was... The balding dude. I was Viper. Like, whenever I played Top Gun, I was Viper. It was awesome. Oh, fuck. What was his fucking name, man? Why don't you go to Top Gun and look I'm it up? I'm on it, man. We know who Maverick was. Yeah. And Goop, I don't think... Maverick, that, Goose, Iceman. Yep, they don't have the... <clears throat> well, yeah, Goose. There's no more Goose. Sorry to say. Why don't you just type in Top Gun and IMDB there? Um, Because I didn't want to do it that way. <laughs> Mom. So... <laughs> wow, you're just probably going to end up going back to Top Gun. And I thought I, wait. Oh, he was Viper. Oh, so I was wait thinking Iron, Michael Ironside was Viper. Tom yeah. Scar- Tom Scarrett was Viper. What was Michael Ironside's name? Lieutenant Commander Rick. No, yeah, I'm but what's kidding. his call name? I was hoping it was Michael Ironside. No, that's where you got to go to IMDb, buddy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so he... <laughs> no, no, you're just on a wild goose chase. Yeah, absolutely. Chester. Oh, lame name. Why would you be Chester? Because not Chester, Jester. Oh, Jester. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, okay, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Jester was a second in command. Where did guy. you see that? Go back. Why did you make me go this whole way if you knew it, it was Jester right, the whole time? It says right there, Jester. Oh yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I didn't know that it said Michael Ironside was a second in command. He was like just under. Uh, Tom and he was Scarrett's. Richter in Total Recall. Yeah, he was a Total Recall. So, Top Gun 2, what are you thinking? Well, I guess it's better than any remake, probably. Let's remake another movie. Oh, a sequel, yeah. Yeah. Like, let's remake Top Gun, yeah. That's like when people remake um, kind of mediocre songs. Let's remake Baywatch. In a more sucky way. Let's do a slower version. Let's do remake Baywatch with Zac Efron and uh, The Rock. (laughs) Uh, I... Dude, you should fucking write that down and fucking copyright it because it is that is a great idea. Do you think they could get Zac Efron and The Rock to do that? I think so. I think that's a good idea. <sighs> I think I'm going to call Hollywood and suggest it. Let's pretend. It. Oh, wait. This podcast, by the way, the date of this podcast is 5-29-2012. <laughs> uh, I sure hope nobody steals that idea from you. But (laughs) (laughs) that now, every time I hear that sound, it reminds me of the lazy DJs. It can get annoying. (laughs) Oh, it can, but it's great. I prefer the run one the best. But so since you guys breaking news, Lance has a new soundboard and I I literally before this podcast, the whole aspect of the soundboard was driving me so crazy. I had to just put my head in my hands, which doesn't usually, it usually happens the other way around. Yeah. And I was frustrated with your soundboarding. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> that goes to my two homies that got kicked out of the bar. <laughs> That's just what I'm going to do is just hit random ones. No. Did you get a new phone yet? No, I hate this phone though. <laughs> Why do you hate it? It's so glitchy. It's glitchy. It's because when those get, the memory gets full. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's LG's version of a cheaper. LG? Yeah. I don't. It's called a stylus too. It's 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 a piece of crap. I hate to say it. My iPhone is growing on me. Um, I did. Uh, well, because no, this one's I'm, not I'm not saying I hate LG. Shit. I'm saying I just don't like this version of the. Right. There. I, gotcha. I, I had LG's exclusively until I got the. It's my second iPhone. one. Before that, I had two Evos. I had two. LG's for seven years. Yeah. It lasted seven years. Basically, the only reason I got rid of them was because, like, the, they wouldn't update to the latest version. <laughs> you know, the software. Mm-hmm. 
So what do you think of Top Gun 2? Um, my fucking balls are juicy over it. You're excited about it? Absolutely. Have you? When was the last time you watched Top Gun? So they're going to have some young strapping new actor in there no, then? No, Tom Cruise. What if it's... Uh, what who if it's, who uh, would be in it? What if it's uh, I, we looked it up Will on Smith's IMDb. kid? <laughs> that little dork. I don't want to say... He is I don't a, want to be mean. He's a goofy. He's a goofy kid, man. He sucks. He does suck. Um, he doesn't live in reality. I don't think. No, no, no. There's lots to talk about that. Yeah, he's like. I guess he's in trouble for. Why am I doing that? That's making noise on the, on the interwebs radios. He, he doesn't. Yeah, he tweets what's his and name? stuff. Little Bow Wow. <laughs> no, um, I hate to tell you this, but they're not the same person. He was in Roots, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> People are going to be like, those guys are racist assholes. No, I'm oh. just kind of referring it to last podcast. Yes, no, I get it. <laughs> What's his name, though? Uh, damn it, I'm drawing a blank. He, was, he would like wear dresses and stuff like that. It's Toby. No, it's not. He was in uh, Earth. I can't believe you didn't get that. All right, anyway. That's a Roots reference. Oh, Toby. Yeah, okay. sorry. All right, so he was in that movie with his dad. And I didn't see it on purpose. Yeah, it was a flop. Did you watch it? <clears throat> I did. Why do you always watch the ones you know are going to suck? I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, all right. It was not memorable whatsoever. What's the plot? Mm. Oh, they're, yeah, their spaceship crashes, mm-hmm. right? And they need to go get help. Yep. And I, I can't really remember because it really didn't hold me at all. Not like you hold me <laughs> at the end of the podcast. Hold me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the- What's his name? What's his name? Jaden. Jaden. Right? Yeah. Jaden Smith. Yep. Yeah. He. You, I want to say something to you, Jaden. Get your shit together. Pull it together. God damn go, it. Go work at a McDonald's for about five or six months and realize how yeah. life is. And don't accept, like, don't bring your cards or anything. Rent an apartment that costs about $800 in LA, which would mean, like, the worst apartment probably. ever. Probably. And Unless work you're in Compton at O'Reilly Auto Parts mm-hmm. and just get bitched at while you're trying to give people the best customer service you can. <laughs> and then you can come back and tell me about life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you, that actually will probably ground you pretty good. Or join the Marines. He is not grounded whatsoever. Uh, speaking of the Marines, you could join the Marines or something, or the Army, oh, or the Air whipped, Force. Whipped into shape right away. Or the Coast Guard. Oh, he's, he's in his. Or he's not even 21 yet, is he? Or the Navy. Yeah. Because it's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. So me and my gross ass fingernails are going to just, we're going to throw this out there. Thank you, everybody Mm -hmm. who serves uh, or has served. I've got relatives. i got friends. Thank you. Happy Memorial Day to you. You earned it. And thank you. Thank you. Back to Jaden. Fucking... He's yeah, he's a tool. So he well, well I mean, you know I, what? He's just a kid, right? He is a kid. He's not so, even twenty one yet. I, think I don't he's think like seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. Well, he fucking apparently. I'm sorry. <laughs> he apparently has it's either tweets or Instagrams where he spouts off about stuff. I guess he's just as bad as Trump. So <laughs> he he goes on these long diatribes and people are like what is going on with that guy yeah but i you know to kind of bring it back what do i want to see or how do i feel about top gun 2 i'm excited and i have a top gun boner for it uh same way i do for the movies i haven't seen yet guardians of the galaxy 2 and prometheus 2 uh, Alien Covenant. You haven't seen that yet, have you? No, but I fucking read a spoiler. <laughs> What'd you read about it? Well, I don't want to say... I don't want you to think I know everything because then it might get more spoiled. I saw like one sentence. And I don't want... <laughs> what was the one sentence? Just tell I me. Mean, <laughs> you're not ruining Basically, it Basically, well, the gist... It was out of context and everything and I just glanced at it. And somebody did do like spoiler alert. But that doesn't help. It's like it says spoiler alert and then it there's, has right underneath as it. As much as I loved it, there's still a lot of things that don't make sense. Okay, did you read? There's a lot of things that don't make sense. Did you read it. Fluff's posts ever? Yeah, when I, you know, when it, I mean. Did you see the one where his friend says spoiler alert and then he t- says the stuff? No, it's about Alien. 
Yeah. What? I don't want to say because that we'd be spoiling. No, just do it. The movie's already out. Who cares? Well, basically, that I find out that they end up destroying the engineers, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I don't make the goo stuff doesn't make any sense. It's like a virus or something, right? Yeah, and it, it doesn't make any sense because it's it's. Um, well, why does the one guy take it in the beginning of Prometheus? Here's. It's like he kills himself. Remember? It's, okay, so there's spores too. So I don't know if this is a, a side effect from the from the goo, and they like started growing in plants or, or spores or whatever. Okay. And then, well, remember, Walter I don't want you to tell me I. everything. I.e., David says, "Let me show you my next step in evolution, and this is supposed to be better." Which he yeah, shows. Okay, don't stop now. Okay. Because I don't know anything about that. All right. When you see it, and we can talk about it. I know that there's another version. It, of, it doesn't make sense because what's going on with the spores and the goo makes more sense evolutionary or effectiveness than what Walter has to show David. Got it. Which in Walter and David are the same. Yeah, it's like a newer version. Right? Yeah, Walter is the old version. Yeah, David's yeah, the yeah. Uh, upgraded version of okay. Walter. And then and, those two. Uh, and you see uh, David right away, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's probably my favorite part of the movie. Is he the star of the movie? Yeah. Most definitely. David the star? Yeah. Michael David. Fassbender. I like Michael Fassbender. And it was funny. We were talking about him. And I don't want to say names, but he's somebody such a good we actor, both man. know. I, he's like, he's one of those iconic actors. He's like a, you know, Cumberbatch or a whatever. Well, remember when we were sitting together and our friend, his name starts with an L, was sitting next to me when Inglorious Bastards was on? And we were talking about how good Michael Fassbender was too, like how his roles his roles are always so good. A friend that starts with L. Yeah, and his last name is starts with an N. He hangs at B fifty twos. He's local. He was on our podcast. No, he was not on our podcast. He was sitting next to me at B fifty twos last week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And. <laughs> That's my effort to not name drop. Yeah. Like. Okay. But we were talking about how great he was. You were talking to him about that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And because Inglorious Bastards was on, and it was so awesome that we were watching it with the subtitles and no sound and like the music in the background, and we were still both just like, "Oh shit, that's good. He's good." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I love him. Yeah. What else has he been in? Let's fucking Google it. Just kidding. I'm gonna put it in the IMDb. Let's just talk about that for a second. Well, he's right there at the top. Yeah, he's probably the most famous Michael in Hollywood. Oh, so he's my cute. he's my age. So cute. <laughs> Sorry. He's in Inglorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. He's in Prometheus as David. Oh yeah, he plays uh He's in the X Men as uh, um uh, Magneto. Magneto. Yep. And then, so that's going to be a young, long list. young Magneto, younger Magneto. Uh, okay, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. His next movie, which isn't so, the second movie is Alien Covenant. He mm-hmm. plays David slash Walter. Yep. That's a 2017. Look at this one, two, three, four, five, 2017 movies. Yeah, but they're not all filmed in 2017. Yeah, you're right. But his next uh, feature is called The Snowman. And his character's name is <laughs> Harry Hole. Harry Hole. <laughs> That's just popped up right there on top. <laughs> right here. So can you imagine the, the interviews? Like, like oh, some woman can is you like, tell us a little bit about the snowman? Yeah, I play this character named Harry Hole. <laughs> Excuse me? Harry Hole. Ha- no, I want to know the character's name. Please don't talk to me that way. Not about <laughs> your, your your giblets. Your private parts. Should we switch? <laughs> oh, okay. Tia is back. I bet she doesn't have a hairy hole. There's <laughs> he played Steve Jobs. Yeah. How oh, many yeah. Steve Jobs movies are there? He's in Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I heard that was like a mm, mm. The Light Between Oceans. Is that like a like a woman drama? I think it's a, like a chick flick. Like, no, it's like your no. It's a woman's entertainment know. movie. W E movie. You know? You know that channel? I don't you watch he, that channel with your wife all the time, don't you? I watch the W B. It's just way better. Oh. Women, bitches. That's what that stands for. He played Macbeth, Steve Jobs. So there's a couple of titular, tit, 
Titular. Titular roles. Titular roles. Titular. <laughs> so lame. I'm Go sorry. down a little bit more. I know. I'm going. Slow West. A couple of X-Men's. He plays another titular role. Frank as Frank. <laughs> and another titular role. The Counselor as the Counselor. Oh, 12, oh yeah. I saw 12 Years, 12 years of, a Slave. That's Brad Pitt's in that too, isn't mm-hmm. he? Yep. Yep. Uh, he's David and Prometheus, of course. Pitch Black High. Shame. That's weird. He plays Brandon. Shame, Brandon. Just go down. We don't need to do all that. Look at all these fucking movies. 300. He was in 300? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. I think that was probably one of his breakout roles. Because everything before that is not really prevalent. No, there's something before that that was really good. Oh, Band of Brothers. That's the one. Was he in Band of Brothers? Yes. Such a good... It's That was one of my... That was on my... Top, not, it's not mm-hmm. my favorite. It's one of my top more mm-hmm. movie series or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, no, I he's fantastic. Inglorious bastards. Look at this. What is going on today? It's like tangential joy. Yeah. What? I didn't realize he was such good friends with Chris Cornell. Brad Pitt. Yeah, he was pretty close with him. So sorry, guys. I know you can't see the screen that we're looking at. So. Uh, next to Michael Fassbender, we have Brad Pitt in a Netflix Netflix original film called War Machine. I actually saw a preview for that. <laughs> it's look any good? I don't know. Were you? Did you think of your new nickname? I really didn't. No, <laughs> no I didn't even think look, about look it. Look at that. That's what I mean. War hey, Machine. Brad Pitt plays me in the new movie called yeah. War Machine. He's. <laughs> it's not a titular role, though, like, oh. as you would guess. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, real quick thing. He was him and his family is him his family and Cornell's family would like hang out. Huh. Well That's why he was at the funeral. Man. I wanna know his relation I wanna know Cornell's relationship to Josh Brolin because he was he he well, was one of the eulogy speakers at the Yeah, a lot of people don't get Josh Brolin. He's legit like he's an artist. Like what? He's, Does he sculpt? No, I mean just with I don't think people give him as much credit as he deserves, is all I'm saying. Mm. Um, I just think that he's fantastic. Um, That's all. So fucking lay off him, guys. Man, I don't know. So it kind of pisses me off that uh, Linkin Park got some guff for being at the funeral and get singing um, Hallelujah. And they're like, oh, that really dumbed down the funeral. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's horrible. Why would anybody fucking say know, something that like stupid? that? stupid? They're just trolling. Okay, first of all, plus let's see, we're here at a so we're Cornell would somebody. make appearances with Lincoln Park yeah, and sing him. background yep. stuff for him. So it doesn't mean they can't be friends. And how does that dumb it down? Quit fucking ragging on those guys. It's, as yeah. much as I don't care for them anymore, assholes. I don't question their friendship or what they had together. I've never stopped liking Lincoln Park. I, I don't care for them anymore. Guilty but that pleasure. doesn't mean I think less of them. Right. And that doesn't mean that it's... Like what are they? Oh, this—they're uh, not famous enough to be his singing at his wake or whatever or funeral. Like, who do you have to have? Well, actually, um, Chester fronted Stone Temple Pilots, which was considered a grunge band back in the day. Yeah, I mean, what he did with them, as far as being Stone Temple Pilots, man, I don't know, but. Doesn't mean those, you know, you can't be friends with somebody. And how does that dumb down somebody's funeral? Yeah, it's just a it's just, shitty thing to say. It is a shitty thing to say. It's it's trolling. Yeah. Well, I got something that'll wrap us back into the weekend here and kind of go down the road you wanted to go down. Okay. So I started a friend of mine named Noak, who I work with. Noak, uh, N O K E? Just N O K. Oh, that's kind of a neat name. Yeah, he's. Um, He's Asian. Oh, no, He's Asian. <laughs> Noki. Some people call him Nokia. Noki. So anyway, <coughs> he um he introduced me to uh because I was listening to Darkness Radio and stuff, and he introduced me to a guy called Dark Waters who, um, or a guy who does a show called Dark Waters. I don't know. I don't know what his name is. What's his name? <laughs> I think his name is Jeff. <laughs> What was that? It says nut nut. <laughs> no, but I told him he should have his own TV Man, show. Yes. And the theme song should be. Why is he a character man, or what? It's Noke, man. It's Noke, man. It's Noke. 
should write that jingle. I did. And he thought that was a good idea. Yeah, he is a character. He's a great guy. So he introduced me to Dark Waters, which is this YouTube podcast, and they talk about the supernatural. And the one of their best things ever that he ever did on that show is talk about the dog man. There's What's that like story about? Really I would see this is like some of my favorite topics. The dog man is like I love movies and stuff, but once you get on the UFOs and fucking supernatural shit. So the dog man is just werewolf, but in the south. Generally, Never heard of it. Generally speaking, well, it's like is it like Mothman? An exceptionally aggressive uh kind of. I mean, it's supernatural like that. Does he yeah. hump people's legs and run away? <laughs> no, he's fucking vicious. But and then he terrorizes people. Like a lot, one a lot of the stories start out that the chupacabra dog dog man is faces up against the window, like sniffing in the house, and like this is a real story. Yeah, oh yeah, there's like tons of stories about dog man. I never heard so, of it. Oh my god, dude, it's so great. Okay, so go to I'm just gonna do this now. Go to Dark Waters mm-hmm. on YouTube after you visited the Flummery mm-hmm. and subscribed, people. What's the Flummery? Tell us more about that. The Flummery is a podcast about nothing and <laughs> full of empty compliments. And But really, we're going to start getting serious. Just keep hold on, folks. Uh, we got a couple of segments coming up about the G7 Summit and some other political, political mm-hmm. stuff. So just stay tuned, okay? Unbiased. Ah, uh, yeah. Free. We call ourselves free and clear thinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Um, the Freedom Report, starring Lance Andrew War Machine Lovering. That's a long Am name. Am I supposed to say your whole name like that? Holy fuck. You can say my whole name. You're going to get stalked. Next thing you know. You beside, Besides from me. Did you see like, what I, real quick here, you see what I put up on the windows? Well, now I can't see the dog, man. <laughs> Did you put that up just so I can't see Is your neighbor? Right <laughs> yeah. No. No, I just, I needed pissed. I needed some privacy though. Some privacy. Yeah, when I walk around. Do you ever naked. get worried when you're like laying down there and just like um, the little engine that could, you know, tug, tug, yeah. tug, tug. The little red guy coming out. Yeah, you know, purple helmet warrior. Yeah. When you're just popping one off on the couch, do you ever worry that somebody's like back there? Like, hey. I hope so. I'm like, take some video. On. Kind of a distant view, but I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> it's like a distant. Vi- or I want it to be released on YouTube somewhere. They see you like. Hanging, but with the ass. little pixelated things like Asian <laughs> porn, you know, and it's just like four pixels. Right, let's write up this. Okay, so it's dark waters. <laughs> okay, okay, so dark waters. After you go out and check the flummery out and subscribe to the flummery podcast, do it. Um, just do it. Go and subscribe to Dark Waters, and he does a lot of that. Those kind of shows, and the Dog Man is basically a werewolf. A lot of stories from the South with the Dog Man, like South. Be particular. Louisiana, mm. Mississippi, that kind of stuff. Places where they drink a lot of moonshine. A lot of, no, I think moonshine is more like the, <laughs> more know, the Blue Mountains. Appalachian. Appalachian. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm sure you can find it in some of those oh, areas yeah. though, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but he has these great shows. I love him. Is, and, he, is he interesting to listen to? Oh, he, okay, so it's really a great, this is a great show because what he does at the beginning is he's got his, his opening and stuff. And then he comes in and he's reading, but it's him. And you're used to hearing his voice, but he's reading a story from someone else. Okay. And so he's a good storyteller. And so he reads the story really well, you know, and so you get a good experience from the story he's reading because it's not them like, yeah, it's yeah inv- man. So then my, uh, it, it's inviting when you, when you listen to it. I had a had extra tobacco that day. You know, no, it's like, it's yeah. He, he adds a flair and sometimes he adds these sound effects and it's, you could say it's cheesy, but it's not. I mean, it's really great for the genre of the like, podcast that he's doing. And then I stay away from the live streaming ones because he does a lot of answering questions in like the comments and stuff. Oh, yeah. And so you can fast forward through it. Yeah, but it's tough to do that. So I just stay away from those. Right. But I like the other compilation ones. And so anyway, he tells those stories, and then he has guests, and it's just great. You know, it's kind of like a. Um and coast to coast, Art Nori. Yes, kind of and he he mentions them and stuff. He checks um, that. I mean, that, that's what started it all for me. Oh, I love it, dude. Why well, am a coast coast, coast guy? Laying in bed, and you listen to AM fifteen hundred, dude, and fucking throw out. a fucking Art Nori on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, Art Nori, and the, who was the other one that followed after him? Art, no, it's oh, Art jo- Bell. Art and Bell George and George Nori. Nori. Yep. Sorry, my bad. And Art Bell had a like 
desert compound because he was paranoid because some shit had happened during his shows. Yeah, it was like a fucking. He was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and they in were Utah. like, and every time in you Utah, have, right? Uh, I think it's Utah. I think so. Yeah. I know it's out. Yeah, it's Utah. Or, and Utes. He's not the. I don't know. He yeah, it's probably a, Utah. He had his own syndication. Or Nevada. That would tap into like. It wasn't Nevada. Might have been. It's one of the two. Look it up. So yeah, he had. He, Go on, yeah, syndication. Word. Well, he had his own syndication, but radio stations all over the country would pick up a syndication and play it on their shows like AM 1500, pick yeah. them up, or wherever you're at. So he would broadcast to whoever, and they would pick it up and, you know, however that works Yeah, out, you and know so what I'm it saying? was like the most syndicated show on the radio, because everybody... And that ran from like 12 or 1 in the morning to like 3 or 4 in the morning, I believe. Yeah, it was like 4... Yeah, it was like two or three. It was like three hours long. Well, and I think here they'd have like five hours because they'd do like two hours and then they'd have another three from another show or something. It was yeah, kind of weird. but. And then he retired. I think he's still alive, actually. Yeah, he's 71. Um, so how did George Norrie get into this? He was just a fan and... and, and well, George Norrie's just a... He's a he's a radio personality and I think he just took it over. Right. I think he was probably picked by art, right? Probably. I would imagine. Yeah, I don't. I don't see the oh, Parump, Nevada. And the guest that he he had one. What? Yeah, Parump, Nevada. <laughs> and he moved to the Philippines. Did he? Yeah. Why? Yep. I I don't know. I don't know. Oh, his wife. Yeah, she's from there. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway, he he refers to he mentions the Coast to Coast show and and it's just Dark Waters. Yeah, Dark Waters. And I get God, why am I doing I that don't right know. now? Holy fuck. CP. It's been a long weekend. I bet. So, so I get, you and me both. Yeah. So I get we're listening to a podcast while the kids are on their tablets and it's a four hour car ride. And when it gets dark, I ask my wife because she doesn't like scary stories. She doesn't like them? She gets freaked out. Really? Yeah. Do you have to coddle her then? No, she just says, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. You know I don't like that. So <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. And then I'll be like, I'll turn the lights off on her at night and stand there real quiet. And she'll just be like, fucking knock it off. And just like, like awkwardly standing there? Well, and then I'll just be like. Knock what off? She doesn't even like that. Wow, it's so lame. But okay, so so I'm like, you gotta listen to this. So we listened to the Dogman stories, and she was wrapped. She liked it. She was like, kind of sitting in her seat forward in with her, her buggy seat. eyes, like intense. And, and she was like, yeah, you know how your eyes go somewhere when you're listening, yeah. real good. Yeah, yeah, she was into it. And then she would comment like, "There's a couple corny ones. Ah, this one isn't really that good." But she liked it too, how he would tell the stories that he'd get sent. Yeah. And then sometimes he'd have a good guest on that would tell stories too. But yeah, it's all that supernatural shit. I love listening to that stuff. And like you said, that coast to coast is definitely what got me started. Oh, it's, it's, it was a basis yeah. of anything that, oh, that yeah. was good, you know? Yeah. And it's like and pertaining to that, that kind of talk. And when you're young, subject matter. I should say. Yeah, exactly. And when you're young, you believe all that shit anyway because your mind is open. Well, you couldn't listen to every show because they're, you know, like not all of them. It's like you can't listen to every Joe Rogan podcast. Probably like all five of our listeners are going to listen to every one of our podcasts. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know, but you find certain things you find and you listen to. You're like, I remember a story. Yeah, go on. I'm going to go into this other one in a second here, but I remember Good. like yeah. one George cool. Norris or Art Bell story where – a guy called in about like working at Area 51. Oh, I already know what you're talking about. Go ahead. And uh, there's a couple different ones that I've heard, but something about bunkers down below. And mm -hmm. there was like a firefight between some aliens and like some security guards and something yeah. like that, you know, because supposedly. The government made a deal, and this is all 
speculate. You know, this is all hearsay, whatever. I'm not saying I believe it, but right. government made a deal where they, they could be here, but and we could learn from their technology. But in mm-hmm. in 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 their thing, they could take random people once in a while. <laughs> I totally believe that. You know I what I'm saying? That. Yeah, I can see that happening. And, you know, uh, okay, yeah, so I mean, that's that's like the extreme of what Area 51 would be. On the less extreme, on the more logical side of things, it's a test f- it's a uh, f- test flight facility. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, facility for like the B2s and the new new yep, new, yeah. new newer stuff. I actually watched another video recently where this guy gets pretty close to oh, what's the road? There's a road you can go on and you can only go so far. But he ended up taking video and a few snap snaps of this picture of the sky and they see he sees two f6 did i bring this up last time no two f16s flying like dog fighting you know pretend dog fighting yeah so you know how they practice that kind yep. of stuff but in the snap photos he took and not the video he noticed a smaller triangular aircraft interacting with with the f16s yeah, yeah. and that those are real pictures and i saw them and i'm like holy shit where'd you see those at uh i'll show you i can't remember the guy it's uh he does like his thing is like in search of the truth or UFO something. He's got it on his car or something, but he's camping out there late at night and he's got it's on YouTube if you look it up. Like just like look up uh getting close to like area fifty one. He's like one of the most uh, well, I can't remember because I didn't really Yeah pay attention on. to that. That's all right. But so, when so like, like I'm saying on the logical side of things, as far as Area 51, it's more of a test facility for new aircraft. But if you want to believe those stories of these guys like, hey, my dad used to work for Area 51. There's aliens there. We have a fucking mutual agreement with them. Um, they can test random fucking whoever citizens they want. Oh, I'm sure there's like a you can't touch so-and-so or this or that. Or, yeah. But um, yeah, like you can't take the fucking president. <laughs> yeah, those security outside of Area 51 drive I've those Ford, Ford Raptors. Yep. And Dude, the, this whole front end. I want one. Late, these, late so at like, night, and they'll be, you'll be there, and you'll be like, you know, like, oh, there's nobody around here. And all of a sudden, it's just lights, bright lights. Bright lights, even through the grill and yep. stuff, will just be like, Poof. pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, those Raptors are badass. They're like 100 grand for the ones I have. So, anyway. Like you're saying, and they're. I think I don't think they're actually. I think they're like ex-military because the, the the security borders are like paid, but they're not. So they they don't have like access to like know what's going on in Area 51 per se. They're they, just like you are in charge of keeping they're pay, people out. They're here. paid to like. I don't give a fuck what's going on here. All you all we pay you to do is your fucking border patrol, and they got cameras set up everywhere. You know they have access to all that stuff. So they're. Their main thing is the security, but nothing inside. They, they don't know anything what's going on inside. They're just like, hey, we're going to pay. They're contractors, like contracted. Blackwater. Yeah. They're contracted. They don't know what's going on inside. They just know that they have to fucking be at the border. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, I don't remember what that guy's name is. The Truth or something. What is it? UFO World TV. <laughs> That's going to be uh, no, go back. even more broad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I have another story. Yeah, tell me about it. You never heard of Skinwalker Ranch? It's called. It's actually it's called Sherman Ranch. I bet I have, but it. It's uh, okay. So this is in Utah. It's in um the north. Oh, two okay. seconds. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just quick, uh, to wrap to jump back onto your Area 51 thing. I heard a recording, and it's pretty famous on the internet, so you can look it up. Of a guy, he's talking to Art Bell, and this is years ago. And then he cuts out, and he's like, "Oh, I remember he's that." Talking, he's yeah, like, yeah, talking like real. And he scared. sounded scared. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And then eventually, they he that's comes like back. one of the most famous. He called in several different times. Yeah, and then he calls back later and says it was all a hoax. But it's like maybe. But they then he called back and that. he says it's not because he because yeah they're making even, me do yeah that. they even yeah. said he's like we don't know if that was real or not but we from, and good for Art you know he's like we don't. We're not telling you this is real, but that's what he, this guy is saying. Right. You know? Yeah. So anyway, go on. I mean, he had, he had to be a really good storyteller. Or... It was good. Yeah, it was really he's like, good. Oh, he's like totally freaking out. And it sounded legit. It didn't sound like acty. Yeah. But so, you have to be a real good actor to pull that off. 
so today, I mean, I've watched, there's actually a movie called Skinwalker Ranch and it's like this 4.5 out of 10 movie or whatever. I thought it was like, I thought it was okay. The whole premise of it, it's, uh, it's based out of, uh, near Ballard, Utah, okay. which is, you know how Utah's got on the Northern corner kind of does this shape like that, like an L shape where mm-hmm. the borders are. So we're yep. on the lower L Ballard is kind of where that corner is. Is it mountainy? Yes. Well, it's it's got those like mountainy plains where it like goes up and it flattens out. Mesas. Yeah. Or plateaus. Plateaus, mesas. Yep. So a Sherman Ranch in 1995, this family called the Shermans, Terry Sherman was the father, I believe, bought this 480 acre lot of land for whatever how much it was, but he was raising like really high end cattle and steers. So he had right. like really like Kobe beef or whatever. Like, well, it was like he had bulls and really expensive and uh, livestock, uh, not just regular livestock. He was he was handling like really. He high was a stuff. sought after breeder and exactly uh, rancher. Yep, rancher. Yeah, and they cool. found a found a really cool area, and uh, the I believe it's the Ute Indians that live near there. They wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Utes. The lore right. Two Utes. says that they won't go near this place because it's fucking weird. Right. Like supernaturally weird. The 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 guy the the owner of the property. Well, he found out through, you know, local like um, folklore, folklore, and like uh, uh, native tribes. Oh, there, okay. That the area that he so the bought, Utes won't go there no, either. They don't touch that area. Holy shit! And it's not a burial ground or anything. No, not that. No, never said anything <laughs> okay. about burial ground. They yeah. just know that weird fucking shit. So it's not like there. the normal like. And this is kind of what, what makes this story cool because it's kind of supernatural meets UFO. Okay. Because it's weird. It's like, fuck. So he buys this ranch. They start noticing. The reason the movie came out, Skinwalker Ranch, they've noticed these entities or this wolf. And the thing with the Skinwalker to the natives is their folklore where uh, it changes form, right? Changes form to play on your fears so it can read minds. Yeah, it's not a demon. It's It's like an animal slash. Entity. Yep. And uh, I think one of the first things that happened is this, the family was out outside and this wolf walked up to him. Look at my face right now. This is how much I love these stories. This wolf walked up to him. <laughs> I'm serious. And it was bigger than a, a lot of wolves they've seen around. Right. Like big. Like the um, the Shermans are like, like six foot plus like a dire guys, wolf. right? Like a dire wolf. Yes. These Shermans are like six foot plus guys. Mm-hmm. And this wolf came up to the, like their chest. That's how big the wolf was. And wow. it didn't have any fear, right? Right. So Not like a normal wolf. Yeah, so that, you know, Terry or whoever the guy and his, like, dad or Terry. His, I forget if it was his brother or whatever, walked up to it. And the wolf didn't back down, but it didn't look aggressive at all either, right? And they're like, what the fuck is going on? And it came up to him and, like, rubbed up against him and stuff, Right. And it didn't have any fear. It was like kind of playing well, off on them. They were probably scared. Well, at first they were, and then the kids, his kids came up, and they were the kids were like playing with the wolf, and it was all weird and stuff. Okay. And all of a sudden, it's like goes after these calves. Oh. Shit. I think it was like being smart, like, hey, I'm gonna get close, and then okay, guys. Ha-ha. And then there's this oh, pen shit. that was nearby, and he grabs this calf by its head and tries to pull it through the, like the fence, and the they grab their guns. And they shot it four times, one in the heart, and it didn't affect it at all. Yeah. It nothing. It, it didn't even phase There's it. Plenty of witnesses. So then his brother, his dad, or whatever. No, this is you can. This is all documented. His his dad or brother grabs a shotgun, starts after the four like handgun shots. <laughs> Probably three fifty sevens or yeah, something. yeah, like the big gun or forty fives. Grabs a shotgun, starts shooting it, and then he notices like flesh and hair moving away. So it finally affected a little bit. And he literally shot it in the heart and did, didn't do anything. So after a couple more shotgun sh- uh, um, shots, mm-hmm. it finally like was like, "All right, I'm gonna go," and it like left. And they followed it, and it disappeared. There was no sign of it. Tracks or nothing it was gone. Fuck. And another okay, and then their dogs. They had like it's several ranch dogs. Crazy. Would hide. And wouldn't come out for days and were scared. 
because like this fucker's yeah. going to eat us. Another thing is they notice weird lights flying around. And this is where it's like UFO. -y. Oh, okay. And the lights would disappear behind like the mesas or whatever and stuff. Yep. And mm -hmm. cattle mutilations too. So they would find like a pile of like plasma messy cow. Like a placenta. Yeah. And just in a burn mark in the middle of a field and his fucking expensive cow. He lost. So what they say is like, it's normal to lose what are they, the statistic. It's normal to lose like 1% of your livestock to like <clears throat> animal, uh, animal, attacks, animal or... attacks. He was losing 20%. Holy shit. Man. So he was, his, his ranch was going downhill and all this weird stuff was happening. The dogs were afraid. That's, you know, what's crazy when you, the dog is fucking goes and pissing itself and is running away. They do that for a reason. Right. They know shit. But there was know. one time where I guess this light, this yellow light was flying through the field and the dogs were, went after it. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, he and Kurt Terry and like the dad encouraged the dogs. He's like, go get them. You know, like what, like what yeah. the fuck is this thing? Yeah. You know, like. It was like a low flying light and they went after it. And all of a sudden he heard the dogs go like, ah, ah, and they were fucking dead too. So probably like, like shocked whatever him. happened to the cattle did it to them too. Oh fuck. So, so this, stay away from the yellow light. It, so it's weird. It's <laughs> they see these lights, but then they see this entity and they, and like, while this is happening, they would know they ended up all sleeping in the same room because they couldn't sleep at night because they would see things outside through the window like yeah pe like a person like standing stalking. there yeah S just standing there i would fucking move way before that happened so they ended up selling to this dude who's doing research on that stuff there i forget the name probably at quite a loss huh he sold it for two hundred thousand dollars well that's, i'm doing this right now oh that's it jesus that's a fucking 480 acres this thing's probably worth three four million dollars it's it's guarded now too. It's like a guarded. He's got the guy that owns it now has it guarded off like fucking Area Fifty One. So he's obviously somebody rich enough to do it. <clears throat> wow. It's All a right. it's a really good story. You should watch, read it. It's so it's I will. It's a because I love like that like shit. I said. It's like I said. It's it's like supernatural meets UFO because I don't know what those there's these lights are. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I just looked up a bunch of stuff on Skin, Skinwalker Ranch, which we can look at later. Right. But yeah, I, I encourage everybody listening to, to yeah, so go the, on YouTube. So the dog <laughs> man, there's a story where it's similar, like this, this apparently there's part of a ranch in the south is not being used. So the family decides to go open up this other half of the ranch, which they've had in the family for quite some time, but not forever, right? So they go to open up this other part of the ranch and they build a house over there i believe in i'm paraphrasing for quite lib quite liberally mm -hmm. and the reason is i don't remember every detail of the story but beer? there's the, yeah yes please oh yeah <laughs> come on now who do you think you're talking to so the the gist of the story is that they open up this <laughs> other part of a ranch and they build a house there and they're they're getting kind of like weird stuff is happening and I, I won't get too specific about it, but weird stuff is happening. So they're like, wow, this is weird. It's not like we're fucking scared. But then the dog man shows up. Is there a form or a look to this dog man? Yeah. Let's look it up, guy. Um, so then the dog man shows up, right? Or dog men. And is there more than one? Yeah. In this case, there was. It starts out, I think, with a, a couple and becomes more. Well, it turns out that that part of the land had been left there for a reason and they they go and they ask about it and they try and find people who are old and you know get the story of this and they're like yeah stay away so it's kind of like and forbidden like the utes did or that the, the not tribe. forbidden for or not, just don't fuck with it right don't fuck with it but it boils down to this and i'll get to that actually that idea at the end of the story so you build this house and the the patriarch of the family is you know finds out that there's these fucking dogmen and they're trying to get into the house and they're they're it's like they're um what's the word for it casing it but then they're also prodding it and poking its defenses mm -hmm. let's say kind of like you know they go in and 
what's that? You know, fuck, what the fuck is that? And then they're gone, you know. And then they start scaring the people, and the people start seeing these dogmen, and they're like, oh, what the fuck? And um, some of the people in the house are like, fuck this. We're going back to the other house. So they go, and the old man is stubborn. So they're like more like man shape then? They're like Are a they werewolf. like a werewolf? It's like a werewolf. So the, the old man is like, no, fuck this. And this is a great long story. You got to look it up. But I'm Stan. Fuck them. We're going to find a way to get rid of them. And it's the same thing. They're shooting them. They're not dying. Pretty soon they're tunneling under the house. They can hear them under the floorboards. Like, you know, and shit like that. And they're fucking clawing at the walls. And then pretty soon it's, you know, they're on the roof and they're tearing the fucking roof. Was oh, it like signs from uh, M. Night Seriously, Show? yeah. Oh, don't, because I know you don't like it. I love that movie. <laughs> I like that movie. Oh, you, yeah. you did? Yeah. Okay. Somebody else didn't like it. <laughs> so. Uh, Just hit him with water. They end up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if we only knew. But they end up. It doesn't work for gremlins, so don't do that. They. Uh, yeah, they multiply when you yeah. pour water on them. They end up tearing the house apart, literally, p- piece by piece, and or parts of it apart. And then they get into the house, and these fucking guys. So really what it ended up being is just like a territorial thing. So this must have been the their area, and then they branch out from there because as soon as they fucking book it, do they pee on head trees? out of there? I don't know. As soon as they <laughs> they pee on knees <laughs> and knee peers because they're so tall. Um, but as soon as the people finally say, fuck this, we're going to die, and they try and book it out of there, they just stop. Hmm. They stop fucking with them. Get out of here, yeah. So they're but, done. So if they're if they're gonna retreat, they they stop fucking with them. Well, no, not in every case, but in this case, it was I think just get out of our territory because this is kind of they're secretive. Obviously, that's why you don't hear, you know, we don't see a bunch of videos of of those uh, dogmen. What's their Greek call sign? Dogma, dogma, dogma. I don't know. I, I yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Why? I, wow. I can't even What's like their I'm fraternity? befuddled. I'm befuddled. I have no fucking idea. Yeah. Werewolf. See these pictures of this guy? So it's basically, they're, they just call it dog man and it's a werewolf. That, you, I could do that on Photoshop. Right. I know that, but it's. You can't believe that picture. Oh. That one's pretty scary. That's a dude with a mask. He's got hands. I know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, so believable. Uh, it's kind of like that, you know, that one video they have of, of uh, Sasquatch. Yeah. And he's walking and he's just going it's like scary. this. And he just goes. And he's still walking. I don't know. Yeah, you know, Rogan did something on that. It was like a Mythbusters kind of deal. Mm-hmm. I think he did a season or two. And then he went up to try to find. Um, oh, he went to that Skinwalker Ranch too. Did he? Yeah, there's a. Yeah. So he's interested in that stuff too. Oh, so. Well, he's trying to debunk. He's trying to prove a point, or not necessarily debunk it, but like say. Oh, they, he actually spent a night out at Skinwalker Ranch outside. Rogan did. Dude, fuck that. It's just a fucking. It's fucking Chris Novoselic from Nirvana in a fucking in a fucking Sasquatch. In a Sasquatch suit. This is actually a Chewbacca outfit. They took the <laughs> yeah. bandolier off. Yeah. <laughs> What's their breed called? Uh, dude, dad giveaway. Don't a do Wookie. the Chewbacca. It's noises. just a Wookie at the end of yeah. the road. <laughs> I'm just a Wookie at the it's end Chewie's of the road. It's Chewie's cousin Chalmain. Walking away real slow. Nobody will play with me. So what is the, what is the, what is the Russians version of us? just a wookie. What's the Russians I'm version of uh, Sasquatch? Is Yeti, isn't it? Uh yeah, that's the like the Alps version, like the snow. Yeah, I guess it would be Russia has the tundra and everything, I would assume. Well, you okay, you wanna, Yeti is the snow one, like the white right. one. Right? Yeah. There's another story of the Have you heard of the cauldrons in Siberia? The cauldrons? Yeah. No. Look up cauldrons, uh, Russian cauldrons in Siberia. So you want to hear another weird story? In Russia, cauldron cooks you. So there's these moats. <laughs> They're circular, right? That was good. <laughs> yeah, go on. And in them below, there's like metallic objects that pop up out of the water and like open up. And it's like a realm to like a 
Is different. Spell it? C yeah C. It's C A U L. Cool. So they think it's either alien technology yeah. or like another uh, missile silo, probably. Yeah, but it's like a, a different species of like hu- human or like an alien or something like that. Okay. But apparently, when you go visit these areas, see see that moat right there. Yep. That's like one of the holes. Like, click on that. Sorry. Okay. So I'm like, <laughs> it's circular, and there's several. It's of them. nuclear. And when people get. The, the, this one dude had the expedition. When people get close to this place, zoom in. Um, I'm listening. Go on. Um, I'm sorry. Apparently, they're metallic and they come out of the water. And some, like back in the early 1900s, they were known. Folklore says like that they opened up and shot f- sh- fires into the sky to protect. How long ago was this? Early 19, late 1800s, early 1900s, like they were shooting, these cauldrons were shooting up into the sky to protect us from like a, a invader. That was their folklore. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. Huh. It's crazy. There's videos on that too. You should watch I that. mean, these stories are coming. I mean, these fuckers are drunk on vodka 24 <laughs> 7. Here's, but look, then, at, like, look at this picture. You know what that is, right? <laughs> yeah, it's from Star Wars. <laughs> Empire Strikes Back, actually. <laughs> But I like, wonder if that's where you get like the you idea. would walk, they would walk on this, and they would like take a stick and go like this, and it would go dong. You know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah, absolutely. And they would come up and raise out. Of, and the thing is, like when people that's get near them though. within a certain radius, yeah, they get like radiation sickness or, or sickness. Dude, I think it's missile silos then. Right. I don't know, man. You gotta, you gotta, you guys, you gotta do your own research. I got a lot of, I'm going to listen to this podcast and just fucking YouTube See, like, all of this Far shit. right. That's what they, that's some, what they think it is. Well, they say there's been a few people that have been able to actually get in there and then we've been in there. They've gotten out, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. I think that's a very interesting story too. Here, look at, this is kind of what they, is the best part. This is kind of what they think they look like right here. This is the best part about, um, <laughs> YouTube image or Google it's images. Funny. Look at wait. Look, this, at all, look yeah. how many similar drawings are of that. Yeah, I think you know when Fons folklore gets well known, that happens. Yeah. But you look up something like Russian cauldron, and you get about a page down, and there's a picture of a Dutch oven. <laughs> I love about fucking. I love it. Well, there's different. Ma- the there's def- different definitions. Different of ways to cook a chicken. <laughs> You you need to watch some of those stories on that though too. I will. I I fucking eat that shit up. I'm absolutely wrapped when I hear. Stuff I'm not like saying this. I believe in everything. It's a nice escape though. It is, but like, it, the oh, possibilities of these things, you know. Well, if we've learned anything, and from the computer revolution and the the you know the industrial revolution, the science revolution, or the science you know like the awakening of all these things, right? And just the exponential growth of ideas and Here. knowledge. That's an actual shot from above. If that teaches you anything, it's that this shit, this is not so far fetched that it's not possible. You know what I mean? This I'm not, not saying not it's, I'm not saying it's false. No, me neither. But I'm not saying it's true either. And I'm just saying that, you know, people would say, Oh, and then this is a podcast. Oh, I was going to talk about some bullshit. It's like, okay, there's a lot of shit that happens that, isn't explained, and then when it gets explained, it's actually fairly simple, but it's still, you know, new or revolutionary or, you know, exciting. Just like, you know, and, this, and these are in some of the most remote areas of fucking Russia, yeah. like Eastern Dude, Russia. Got but th- that's a real that's a real shot. It's got to be missile side off. No, how how could how could that be a missile? And why would there's no roads? There's nothing. There's no roads. True. Well, they no probably roads. could have made it and then just cleared everybody out. They probably didn't want the, no, the people to know. It's in swamp. Oh, okay. It's in the swamp. Yeah, so that would be pretty fucking tough. It's it's here the thing with it, it's not an easy place to get to. Do you guys hear me typing? Call in right now and tell me if you guys can hear the typing or not. Okay. He's okay. looking up Asian ass porn again. <laughs> no, I'm not fluff. <laughs> Look at oh yeah, it's not even close. See? Yeah, but that hasn't that looks nothing like what we were looking at. This looks like a nipple. It does. 
Small boob, big. Is that nip. the top of the missile? Yeah. Like that's kind of fucking. You couldn't bury it ten feet deeper. That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> you walk over there with a hammer. Ugh. You're like, bing. <laughs> the engineers are like, sorry guys, we didn't b- build this silo deep enough. It's like a shotgun just- shell. Nobody touch the tip. Yeah. Because it will go off. They're like we didn't do it deep enough, and you know it's it's like when you put a recess window. Finances are get tight. A, get a little plastic cover around it. Here, here's actually the. Our the missile silo climb in there, but that looks like from the top. Yeah, man, I it's it could be obviously the Russians were developing nuclear missiles think, the same time we were, and they probably did it a little differently. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I that's the I, only possible explanation because, like I said, I don't I believe. I don't think shit. they are. I, I don't honestly don't think they are. <clears throat> Look, it's a nipple, and then you open the lid, and it looks like a penis. And why wouldn't, in a, if there was, like, nuclear capabilities in those it's places, nuclear. why would they leave it just the way it is like that? Uh, I guess because it's easier to leave it than pay to get it out of there. I don't know. But, but the lore says you could walk down into these things like you're going into a, a fucking submerged building. Kind of like the places they found in, um, like, in... Oh god, no! I'm forgetting the name of the country. Not Belgium in the in Latin America. Uh, starts with a B. Bullshit. <laughs> no. Anyway, I'm I'm an idiot. So anyway, in like the in Latin American countries where they find like the old, you know, Peruvian stuff, and they find the old cities and they dig them out, and it's like these stairwells down into these big church, like you'd think gathering areas, probably a church of some kind. You're you know? talking about like Machu Picchu. Yeah, yeah, but there's other Which ones. Which is built on a fucking mountaintop cliff, like a fucking peak. No, that's not what I'm talking about. There's other ones that they've dug out of the ground. <coughs> so, similar to that. They find missile silos in them? <laughs> no, they found giant nipples, though. It's amazing to think of the land that we don't know. That's amazeballs. Because if you look at Siberia and how big it is. I mean, it's like one. It's the biggest span of fucking land anywhere. Russia worries me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. <clears throat> but and there's nobody there. Well, there's like uh, Inuit tribes or whatever, kind of whatever you call them. Yeah, um, <coughs> native peoples. Yeah, and they're very you, they're very Asian. Would it be Inuit? Well, yeah, uh, <coughs> they have an Asian of Asia. Mm-hmm. But that land up there that's unexplored. most of Russia is Asia, isn't it? Yeah. We failed geography. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Another thing is Antarctica. So I've thought of Belgium and Beirut, and I still can't think of a place. And my wife has been there. <laughs> Have you ever driven between California and Minnesota? No. That makes you appreciate how much... We- I've flown it, yeah, and watched. How much open this oh, is. Yeah. It's so open. Well, and then you look at like a population There's map. towns that are 100, 150 miles apart. Yeah, when you think about there's houses that are 10 miles apart, you think that'd be a lot, but it's not out there. No. No. And not. you appreciate it. Like when you're in California, you're driving out, and then you start getting into Nevada, and it's Winnemuc, Wisconsin, or Nevada, between that and Salt Lake City is like 120 miles or something like that. And, and that's the Salt Flats. The Salt Flats is there. So between Nevada. 120 miles. That's cool. Yeah. That's a fun drive. It's kind of wicked. See that. Just gla- and it's hot out. You just see glass. It's just glassing. You know what I'm saying? Just glass. Just glassing. Yeah, you're just glassing, bro. And it's cool once you get to and- Salt Lake and you get to the, uh, Salt Lake City and you, you start climbing the mountain there. Do you ever get out? It's cool. You get out like with your, you know, like tear the tops off of old salt containers and you go out there and just scoop it. Like salt is cheap, but if it's free, you might as well just get some salt while you're there. Mm. It's not refined, though, I don't think. Yeah, there's no iodine added? Yeah, it's not cleaned and refined. I'm not saying you're going to get anything from it. Cause Look, it this image is in 4K. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that one hurt. <laughs> oh, I hate those. Like, My headphones almost fell off. That could have been the one to give you a stroke. Yeah. Like, I hate those, dude. That fucking hurt. You, you guys Fuck ever have that, that sneeze where it just fucking hurts? In your... Like, have you ever had one that, like, hurts in your taint? No, that's weird. Like, your whole back hurts and it... Ding! Oh, God! It's bad. I hate those. Uh, well, we're on the subject. 
What subject are we on? Well, we're talking about supernatural and UFO stuff. Stay tuned, though, for some uh, great insight about the G7 summit and all the political, political politics you can Yeah, the G7. Muster. There's three hours of this podcast. Are they going to execute Order 69? I don't know. They were in the G spot just deciding on that all day. <laughs> See, guys, that's the thing. That's what you're getting with us. The benefits is you know, our knowledge of um, the politics. You, we're, we're huge politicians. What you would call politicos. Yeah, we, that's how you pronounce it. And uh, if you didn't know, this is if a, you're not a politico, then you wouldn't. We're in a political township right, right now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, we're we're getting so politicky, like. We're so politic, you know what I'm saying? There's a politeness to it, right? And it's like, you know what I mean about politics? Yeah, we're really knowledgeable about that stuff. Really well versed. So, if yeah. you're male, the correct word is politician. But if you're a female politician, you're politicia, right? Is that yeah. how that works? Yeah. Yeah. Gender based. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean. Yeah. We're not trying to go gender base anymore. But I thought like if you're a male politician, you're called a politician, and if you're a female politician, just because you're like married to a politician. Yeah, but you're politicia. Politicia. Shalissa. <laughs> Shalissa. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Does anybody tell you, you look like Beyonce? <laughs> no, but they tell me I look like Shalissa. Who's Shalissa? Me, motherfucker. <laughs> Did she say that? Yeah. Oh. That's the whole thing. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Holy shit. We got a problem in the podcast today. Missile launch. <laughs> the, the fucking Russian cauldrons are open. What's going on? T minus 42 seconds. <laughs> how, how much more should we kind of let them know how much more goodness about how politically smart that we have should we tell them about oh well, we know everything cool we have the answer to everything politic wise well then i guess there's no use talking about it we we are the politic politicianers politicianers <laughs> yeah it's like the practitioners of politicaria yeah i'm glad i'm glad everybody's kind of getting the gist yeah. the gist of it you know um couple of smart guys we don't want to make people feel dumb so we'll just kind of leave it at we that. have all the answers so if you want to call in and ask us a political um yeah if you based want, yeah question yeah from the <laughs> political arena go ahead and just call in right now yeah phone number 666 666-6669 Well, it doesn't seem like, <laughs> I feel like we might have intimidated the audience a little bit. Uh, so it doesn't seem like we're getting a lot of info, <laughs> a lot of questions. Is there any other places on earth that you know about this weirdness going on? I mean, have you really researched Area 51? Have you? I, I do Google Earth of Area 51 all the time. Dude, I Have you ever looked at it? I was researching it and then my research stopped when I saw the true story about Independence Day. <laughs> so I couldn't hold a straight face on that one. <laughs> and it's, this is when I really respected Will Smith. You know, that's how he got into acting. He's a true vet, true yeah, war hero. He is a hero. Him and Jeff Goldblum. He knows, yeah. how, he knows how to play a mean game of chess, too. I still haven't figured out how they. Could, figure out with the virus but we'll get to that later and that happened in multiple places it wasn't just uh localized in one area i like the whole idea no and in all seriousness we did i am a big supernatural guy i love it and i don't care if it's true or not i just love it i do actually i hope a lot of it's true but then if you think about how fucking scared shitty you'd be if this stuff is happening around you, then you're like, oh, I hope it's not true. I think there's a lot of weird things that are happening around us that we have no idea how to make sense of it. Do you think, here's a problem I see happening. And this is, I'm not 
I'm not like we're not joking anymore. Well, I mean, we might crack one here and there, but I'm serious when I say we might be regressing in our percept perceptiveness because of the things we've given ourselves, technology and mechanically. I think that could be totally opposite too. No, I agree. In certain certain aspects. There is that yeah, literally there's whole aspect <laughs> of of how it, it's helping us grow. That's a fact. You're right. But it seem it's kind of like money. There's only a small amount of the people who are actually using all this new shit I to said grow. This before it's like what can we and see? Other with people our are using it to light. regress. We can we can only see certain spectrum of light. Yeah, light, sound. Um there's only so many, you know, nerve endings on my penis right you know i could be experiencing something that i've never experienced before and just not know it uh no but in all in all seriousness there's a there is a like a a faction of society that is learning and growing and becoming better because and i think there's a lot there's things to be in telepathic in ways i see like 80 percent of society is regressing no. i like the 80 20 rule which I, scares me because I, I, with all the dumb people having kids, yes. If you I want to go there, see I'll... us moving ahead to a place where we are much more enlightened. And by enlightenment, I don't mean like Buddha and karma, and you know, which I I dig that stuff. Jesus Christ, I do too. But that's not what I'm talking about right. now. I yeah, I love spirituality in all aspects too. But my point is like it, we could be working towards greater enlightenment. But most of society is just using the things that we have now as kind of an escape. Because if you think about it, uh, 75 years ago, life was still a struggle. But right now, and I'm just talking about here. Obviously, in other parts of the world, it is, of course. Oh, yeah. You don't want to fucking live in Syria right now. And there's parts of, you know, and there's like, let's say, let's take Africa. There's large parts of Africa that are, you know, still... They're just subsistence living. And they're slaughtering each other. Right? Well, that's not the areas I'm talking about. But there's it's kind of weird because it's like... Of, there's some of that going on, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they're learning, right? In those areas, too. Like, we don't want all this murder anymore, or they're learning to murder. It's That's kind of a natural progression for me, so I'm not so worried about that. Even I'm not worried totally about sucks. people dying. I just want to... You have to have death. I feel like it's a natural progression when the society gets fucking takes a light year jump ahead of where you like if we lived there and we'd never seen any of this shit and then you were just like presented us with us with it everybody would be fighting for the for the trucks and the guns and the you know the tvs and shit like that too you know what i mean mm -hmm. that's what they're you know and money and power that's what they're fighting for there because that stuff gives you technology and industry and what have you but now veer it back to our conversation because yeah. you're kind of going off onto another. Well, tangent. I know, but I, was... I get what you're saying, but now you're going to like, you know, you know. Well, it's you're... part of the same thing, but it's part of the same thing. But I get it. What I'm saying, I just is... don't want you to stray too far. Right, right. And then I might run into a dog, man. Woof, woof. Scary, you know. Right. So, I'm just saying, I'm worried that maybe the group of people that are getting more and more knowledge and more and more idea of like actual reality and not just perception. Does that make sense? Because perception is probably only one, you know, one one hundredth of reality. You know, what we see, what we hear. Our idea of perception. Yeah. Our, well, that's literally our perception. feeling and knowing of our perception. Yeah. Well, that's perception. Yeah. Right. That's well, it pertaining to us. Yeah. Not some wolf in the on, on the that street. could easily be overcome by another dark age. What a, what a, what can dogs see that we can't see or know? It's like when those dogs at the ranch, yeah, and they're like quivering. They know something's fucked up out there. Yeah, like aliens supposedly communicate telepathically. Right. Maybe dogs do too. Well, maybe there's a sense we don't understand that right. they, that that we can't fathom. You know, like how my dog. I take him outside and he doesn't shit and then he shits 10 minutes later in my basement. <laughs> do I know he didn't try and do that? Because at this point I'm guessing he did try to do that. And is he thinking, fuck this guy? Or is he like, I love you, but check this out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Check out my hot I'm toddy thinking, on the floor. I'm thinking he loves me. Like, is he looking back at it? Like, fucking dude is going to love this one. Every time I leave him one of these special ones, he picks it up quick. Like, the quicker he picks it up, he probably thinks it's That's the best. That's because he feels loved. That's how he Thanks knows he's loved. Thanks for cleaning up my shit, dude. You must have really loved that shit I just dropped. Or is he like... Because you're on it like a flying shit. Like, which would be really great if he was thinking that, and I'd be okay with it. Like, hey, bro, here's another one. Are you going to grab it quick? <laughs> like, Do you I grab it barehanded, or do you, use a, do you use plastic? He's like, Hector's like, hey, hey, dad, um... I love that you love me so much and that you love my turds a lot, but it's kind of weird. So I'm hoping that's how it is and it's not like this. <sighs> it's kind of fucking rainy outside, asshole. Why am I out here? Can we... Can I go in? <sighs> come on in, Hector. If you're not going to go to the bathroom, come back in. <laughs> going upstairs. I think he's going to go get make something in the kitchen. His world up right now. I think I got the squirts. <laughs> you know, when dog runs down the stairs, yeah. and then he's just like, Come on, I don't want him to catch me. Fucking, he yells if he sees me do this shit. Fuck you, Adam. Hi, guys. No Done. Oh, fuck you, Adam. That's my shit. Fucking clean it up, dick. I hope that's not how it is. How's that for on topic? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would come up. We could have, you could have broke that one out early. Sorry. Okay, guys. Can I get back to the show, guys? Okay. <laughs> Bless you. Oh. We've got seven minutes. No, I think, I think we can wrap it up. I think we're good. It's a good push. And I just want to let everybody know, like, um, besides listening to us, and I know you're going to subscribe to our YouTube channel and or visit our former really dot understand if you how you could not at this point. Right. I mean, you should. I mean, it's something you should just do. Yeah. It's There's like bucket list. It's it. like if you're, you know, if you're in college or high school, late high school or in college and you haven't done a keg stand, you need to do it. It's the same yeah. principle. You or need to fucking suck the dick. Yeah. That male or female? Yes, it doesn't matter. What you if should do it in college. If you have a, if, if you're that's when it's okay. And you fucking do it. I'll do it anyway. So I'm on board. Don't matter. Mid, like mid. You change need to get on. Of, it, right. Mid change hermaphrodite or like born hermaphrodite. Uh, mi- uh, born. Yeah. Yeah. Embrace. Yeah, I em- would embrace the flummery. Embrace your your mixed genitalia. Embrace your inner. Right. Uh, trans um, gender well I'm going to wrap it up so again come join us at the Flummery on YouTube and subscribe comment like that's what we want we want you to be a part of us internally we want as like we want you to understand us and like us so much that it feels like you're inside our bodies yeah like I want to feel we like a you little Jason crawling around in my butthole area yeah like I want it to feel like you as listeners, fingernails are going to look like mine because you had to crawl so hard to get inside of my thoughts and ideas and my body. I think we should take a picture on Instagram that tonight. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, Sound again, Mando I'm going to wrap up uh, also by saying if you haven't checked out any story, the three big stories we talked about tonight was the dog man, which I haven't done any research on yet. And I'm going to probably listen or watch on some of that material. Adam's going to do his research on Skinwalker Ranch, a.k.a. Sherman Ranch, and the Cauldrons of Russia. I actually, yeah, I'm going to check that out. So you're going to subscribe to the, the Flummery, and then you're going to check those stories out because they're all interesting, that sounds like an supernatural Maiden, so. slash UFO kind of cool stuff. Cauldrons check it out. And with that, Adam, I think we're out. Oh, well. <laughs> I got a cobra stick for a necktie A brand new house along the roadside And it's a made out of rattlesnake hide Got a brand new tin that baby 
I've been on top and it's a met out of human skull. Come on, take a little walk with me, baby, and tell me who 